How y'all doing? Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. This is your boy Mongo Slate. Today, we're going to talk about Bad Bunny again because the cultural rift, in uh, particularly in the WWE sort of fandom, has grown quite a bit because of this Bad Bunny stuff. So we, today we're going to listen. We're going. Arn Anderson weighed in on Bad Bunny, and uh, I'm going to read what he had to say, a transcript of what he had to say. Also, Dave Meltzer has some things to say about Bad Bunny that were kind of neither here nor there, but I'm going to play those clips too. I'm going to play that clip. Uh, shout out to Blu-ray Wrestling for um, providing the clip. Um, also, I will be reading two pro-Bad Bunny articles. One from Fightful, um, which is a letter from a fan. Another is um, basically a little bit of a deep dive into Bad Bunny and his fandom of pro wrestling, specifically the WWE. So there's been a lot of people who have been trying to... Um, Trying to say like, oh, he's a real wrestling fan, as if that matters. And making that seem like it was, <laughs> it's, it's okay. But then again, it's okay even if he's not. There have been people who have showed up in WWE that have not been fans of wrestling at all. And they have improved business. They have helped out. They've come to enjoy it from being on it. Um, this guy was just a, a lifelong fan. But I think that the reaction that he has gotten has been in, incredibly, un, it's unorthodox. Because I don't haven't never seen another uh, celebrity get the kind of backlash that Bad Bunny has gotten. I have never seen this before. Like, there have been all kind of rappers and actors and people who, again, I, don't, I have no idea who they are that have showed up on in WWE or in wrestling in general, uh, and I have never seen this kind of reaction. Yeah, I've never seen it. It is unparalleled. And um, I, I, I can't explain it. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but let's get into let's get into the Meltzer clip, and then I'm gonna get into uh, reading what Arn Anderson had to say. I think he's bigger than he is um, because he's big in a you know, and you know what he probably helps them w with Latins to a degree, but uh, you know Latins have I I wonder, um, and, and I don't know you know Lat you know what Latin fans want pro wrestling to be. Um, and also the other thing is, is that like, while he's very well known, I mean, he's, he's a, one of those characters. I mean, I know that a lot of people in that culture don't like him, but they know who he is. He is super famous in that culture, but it's not like he's this beloved character. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a guy who some people like, and some people really don't like. So it's not, you know, it, it, it's, not, and I don't even know that. I don't even know if they know that, you know, cause you know, what's, you know, what's a bunch of, you know, 55 year old white guys going to know about Latin culture? You know what I mean? And they're the ones that think that like, this is, this is this big coup. And maybe it is, you know, I mean, like, you know, I mean, it, it, it can't hurt, but I, I don't know. Like I thought like him winning the 24 seven title, it's like, I know what they're doing it for, but I don't know that, um, I don't know that people might start to, you know, I mean, it's a joke belt and everything, but I don't know that people might start to resent it when you put him over your your guys, if you know what I mean. I also wonder. You see Meltzer is again speaking in uh, pretzel. He doesn't really understand um, <laughs> the concept of if you're well known, then a lot of people kind of like you. And then they'll say, well, I know a lot of people don't like him, but he's very popular. That that doesn't correlate my dad, my guy. Look, it look. We know that you're not probably not 100 percent liked by everybody in every culture, you know. But if you're known enough that you know uh, you can make billions of dollars, billions of views, billions of streams, you're pretty well known. You're pretty fucking popular, bro. I mean, it just is what it is, and I don't see why people who pride themselves on doing research are people who uh, have no idea how to just accept that some people are popular, even if you don't know them, who they are and don't know and don't like them. But this is what Arn Anderson had to say, because this has been very interesting. And I think that he, he says a lot, but he doesn't really talk about bad bunny in sp specifically, but he sets up the next piece of this argument. This is going to be a transcript I'm reading from wrestling Inc. This is from, I guess his Arn show, which I dare not listen to. It's incredibly dry. It's like eating a whole loaf of bread dry. You know, it's it's terrible. So, uh, here's what he says. This is what Arn Anderson had to say on the subject of Bad Bunny. I don't know anything about Bad Bunny. If they're not big fans, what are they doing on our show? 
Wrestling fans are dedicated to a wrestling show and wrestlers. They are not there to see Hollywood stars or anything of that nature. It's an aggravation to them when they don't know who it is. If I don't know who it is, I just watch their performance on the show and critique it for what it is. Wrestling fans get pissed because it's downtime. The celebrities that were we had over the years had nothing to do with wrestling whatsoever. You can just see it from the fans. The fact is, there is a place that's called the rest of the world that's not America. And if he's as big, if he's a big star, there's probably a reason for it. Uh, so he kind of set everything up, you know, uh, he's of course saying that, you know, Hey, there's not always a place for celebrities in wrestling. It, you know, sometimes they're in the way, you know, sometimes they're in the way. And I, and I agree with that. Sometimes they are in the way. Sometimes, you know, you have celebrities, they add nothing to the show. They barely want to be there. They'll pop up for two seconds or whatever, but bad bunny is not that. Okay. That is, and that's what it is. That we going into the next thing here because uh, some young lady um, named Demon Diva put up an open letter to wrestling fans about Bad Bunny up on Fightful. This was published February the 20th, which was approximately Saturday. So it says, um, this is a, I'm, I'm really, I, I really don't want to read this whole thing, but I'm going to uh, read enough of it so you can get an idea. It says, hope this letter finds you well. I am one of you. I fight every day to prove people wrong and drop the typical mentality. The non-wrestling fan people have of us. I hate the stereotype. I hate when I hear you don't look like a wrestling fan. I'm sorry. What are we supposed to look like? We are all different and come from different walks of life and most importantly from different backgrounds, which brings me to the main reason I am writing this letter. I am proud to be a wrestling fan, almost as proud as I am of my background. I was born and raised on a small island in the Caribbean. You might might have heard of it, Puerto Rico, where the weather is nice and easy. Puerto Rico, 100 times 35 miles of beautiful scenery and people. Someone who shares my background is Bad Bunny. I understand that Bad Bunny might not be for your demographic. Nor do I expect you to listen to, quote unquote, that kind of music. I get it. It is not for everyone. What I hope you can understand at the end of this letter is why he should be embraced or at the bare minimum, let the demographic that adores him have this without having to defend him. I am not going to sit here and educate you on how big of a star Bad Bunny is, how he is Spotify's most streamed artist, was at the Super Bowl halftime show last year and truly is one of the world's biggest stars today. That you can learn with a simple Google search. What I would like to do is to help you understand why I love seeing him on TV every week and what it represents to me and other people like me. So now this article kind of goes into, um, you know, his real name and his background, that they come from the same town and that um, Bad Bunny, you know, was was a fan and he had been doing wrestling, um, wrestling uh, nights and his music for years. Uh, to give you an example, she says, then I saw him on my timeline a few years ago in a music video with Ric Flair and I popped before Ric Flair dripped. There was Sean Bea. And if you pay a close attention to the lyrics of the song, you can hear Bad Bunny drop a stone cold reference. In fact, throughout the years, Bad Bunny has made a reference wrestling reference and a lot of huge hits names. He has mentioned include John Cena, Triple H, the boogeyman, Booker T, Ric Flair. You get the point back to Sean Bea. Once I saw the video on my timeline, I had to run to YouTube, not for Bad Bunny, but for Flair. So I found the full video and press play and and remember loving everything about the video. From the Nature Boy to me saying out loud, my God, he sounds so Puerto Rican. If you ask some people from other Latin countries, they will tell you sometimes they have a hard time understanding him. And that's because he speaks that straight out of the island Spanish. I was hooked. I started following him on social media, seeing him get bigger and bigger. I popped when I saw him uh, do on a music video right next to Drake wearing a Latino heat shirt. This guy, one of the coolest dudes today, loves wrestling. Someone to help break the stereotype. Bad Bunny loves wrestling so much that in 2020, when he had beef with Anuel E. Ozuna, two other Puerto Rican rappers, they decided to use it against him by poking fun at Bad Bunny for still liking wrestling, impl- implying that they grew out of it, quote unquote, but Benito didn't. How many times have you been in that position? How many times have you gotten the, quote, you know it's fake, or, quote, I watched when I was a kid and grew out of it? Comments that make you feel mad? 
and make the people saying feel like they are so much better than you because quote they grew out of it imagine if that happened to you on a music video that has over 100 music views 100 million views on youtube and that is this is a that's a pretty good statement you know it's a pretty good argument it's pretty powerful um so this this little this little letter is pretty cool you know it's pretty cool it's not it's a little a little heavy on the emotionalism, but you know that's kind of the point of the whole thing. But the big, the big, the big uh, article that I wanted to get into is the NBC News article. It says that uh, the title is "Bad Bunny's Love of Wrestling Showcases Its Growing Latino Fan Base." Um, this is this came out February the twelfth, um, and this is an a, an, a, an incredibly long article. And <laughs> I don't know if I can, it goes, of course, into Lucha Libre, but I'm going to read the stuff about Bad Bunny too. Um, so this is by Cora Cervantes and Brandon Gomez of CNBC. It says longtime wrestling fan Melanie Armendariz, 37 from El Paso, Texas, had one reaction when she saw the video, the video that has become a viral moment. Quote, seeing Bad Bunny was priceless, said Armendariz about the reggaeton stars recent exuberant leap into a WWE ring's top rope where he landed using beloved Latino wrestler Eddie Guerrero's classic move, the frog splash, taking down two WWE superstars. He actually just did a crossbody, but I don't expect these people to know everything. For Armendariz, it proved that she already knows. Quote, we are a part of the wrestling world and we are part of the wrestling world and pe more people are learning about it, she said. Bad Bunny's appearance created a cultural movement for Latinos and showcased their love of wrestling. I'm at my peak, Bad Bunny said in an Instagram post in Spanish, referencing the catchy hook of one of his newest tracks named after the famous WWE wrestler Booker T. The Puerto Rican wrestling, the Puerto Rican uh, Latin urban artist, I'm sorry, I don't know how I got to wrestling, uh, performed the song in the WWE stage on January 31st with Booker T himself standing next to him. According to WWE, the appearance garnered 36.7 million total views across YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and WWE.com, and more than 2.5 million total engagements across YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram that night. Bad Bunny made his way into 25% of WWE's Monday Night Raw social conversations following his appearance, the WWE told NBC News. Before the appearance that went viral, Bad Bunny had made his love of wrestling quite clear in his song, I Like It, with Cardi B and J Balvin. Guerrero como Eddie, que viva la raza. A warrior like Eddie, long live the people, saying Bad Bunny, an homage to Eddie Guerrero, the popular Mexican-American wrestler. Guerrero, which translates to warrior, would use the phrase to showcase pride in his heritage. Then it goes into uh, uh, Lucha Libre and uh, Mexican wrestling, which is basically a religion. Lucha Libre is just incredibly popular in Mexico. You know, it's like, I think Americans kind of downplay it a little bit, how popular, not just pro wrestling is, but especially uh, Lucha Libre. Because, you know, we, we see Mexico as being like a poor country, right? And that they're poor and, you know, who cares about them? I see a lot of people do that about Indians too. You know, a lot of people do it, say that about the Indian population because they're like, oh, the people who just watch the YouTube videos, they're just poor Indians. Who cares? Right. Or they'll say, well, the Indians can't support a market because WWE ran house shows or whatever in India and they had to uh, counsel them because they didn't sell enough tickets so, and all that type of stuff. But they really it's a lot of people who really underestimate other markets. They tend to focus on their own market. Um, that's just a nature of wrestling fans. I've seen a lot of uh, Puro fans. Say the same thing about New Japan. New Japan is trying to go into America. They need to just focus on home. I've seen a lot of that stuff. So it's not just like, oh, it's American racism. It's like, it's if you want to call it racism, I guess the Japanese are racist too because they don't like the idea of New Japan strong and you know having so many American wrestlers and New Japan trying to cross over to becoming the United States. They don't mind that you know, wrestlers come from the U.S. or England to go to Japan. They have a problem with thinking their guys are going to try to come over to the U.S. and make a living. They have a problem with that. At least, at least from what I've seen. If you're a, you know, a pure old guy and you're like, oh, I don't have a problem with that. I haven't seen that in the people that I talk to. Then, oh, well, I'm telling you what I saw. But this going back to this article here, they talk about the Latino buying power and the Latino uh, impact on the WWE. It says Latino buying power. According to Nielsen, Latinos were 54% more likely to have purchased WWE merchandise in the past year 
compared to non-Hispanics who are 10% less likely to have bought. One of the many consumers is Juan Martinez, 25, from Los Angeles. Quote, the fact that I love, the fact that it's wrestling and Bad Bunny, a Latino, things I love. Why am I not going to purchase that merch, he said. Latinos buying power is expected to top $1.9 trillion by 2023, higher than the gross domestic product of countries like Australia, Spain, and Mexico, according to Nielsen. Martinez said he wasn't sure when the next opportunity to see a Latino, his favorite artist, and his favorite pastime would converge again. So he swept up the swag. I got the hoodie and I got the shirt. If there was more merch, I'd buy it all. Since his appearance, Bad Bunny has returned to the ring with speculation of a matchup in this year's WWE WrestleMania. Welcome news for Latino wrestling fans like Martinez. Quote, the adrenaline rush that I had got from watching it, I just, I was just something you can't really explain. It's a good pastime for people right now. So that was essentially the article on Bad Bunny and his impact on WWE business and on uh, wrestling in general. Now, I did a video on on Bad Bunny before, and I said basically that wrestling fans live in a bubble, and it seems that of course they do, of course they do. But Bad Bunny has been everywhere, and this again has opened up such an incredibly uh, insane uh, amount of <laughs> people who are negative and positive about this. Like I can understand why people be positive about it. My favorite rapper has never showed up at a WWE show. The closest that I've gotten was seeing Method Man at SummerSlam in like 1998, I think it was. Uh, Method Man was in the crowd. Like He didn't get to do anything, but he was there. I was a big Method Man fan at the time, but I've never had like one of my favorite rappers show up or somebody that I really, really listened to, really, really liked show up on a wrestling show. I've never had that before. So, but, so I'm looking at it from the perspective of a Hispanic fan that probably think that this is one of the greatest things ever. You know, this is almost like getting on, you know, Mil Mascaris. You know, it's like, so it's, it's, it's fun for them. So I let them have it. You know, I don't have to understand it. He's not all over the show doing way too much. And he's talking about, oh, he's putting you over the, you know, what is Melzer talking about? They're going to, people are going to turn on him if you start putting him over your guys. It's the fucking Miz. Who cares? Nobody cares about the Miz. Like in our truth, losing the 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 twenty four seven title. I mean, it's a it's a joke title. You know, if he goes out there and he's and he's uh bumping Drew McIntyre or you know uh, clothesline and Roman Reigns. I mean, it might be a little bit different, but usually that's what they do with celebrities. They put them out there with the with the with the comedy guys, the entertainment guys, and they get to do fun stuff. And it's fun. Just let it be fun. Right. Like we don't have to overthink it. We don't have to overdo it. But there's a lot of people who are getting they're getting a little a little too. They're going too far with this. Just just let Bad Bunny have fun. He is a wrestling fan having the time of his life. I'm OK with it. You know, he's not he's not involved in anything that I actually care about. He is uh, putting over Damian Priest. He's helping Damian Priest, who is one of my guys. You know, I like Damian Priest was a big fan of his. If he's going to get Damian Priest some exposure, I don't give a fuck who he beats. You know, I don't care. You know, at this point, everything's temporary, man. You know, as long as it's not, you know, David Arquette level, him winning the world title or anything like that. If he just wants to be a part of it, especially since he can't tour, he wants, you know, he he's at the performance center training and stuff like this. Come on, man, let's go for it. You know, this is very different from Bow Wow, you know, and I know a lot of people may say, like, why are you so, why are you caping for Bad Bunny and you shit on Bow Wow? It's because I know Bow Wow is probably just chasing the hype. You know, that's just kind of how he is. You know, um, I just don't, I don't buy it, right? I'll buy, I'll buy that Shad is serious about being a wrestling fan and all that type of stuff And when I see it. But when he didn't mention anything about being a wrestling fan, has never tweeted about wrestling, never done anything about wrestling until he saw a Bad Bunny. Then all of a sudden he was like, oh shit, you know, I'm trying to get on that gravy train. That's a completely different thing. I'll believe it when I see it. But Bad Bunny, I, I didn't, I can't say anything other than a lot of people seem to like him. You know, the demographic that is a fan of his has been a fan of WWE for a long time. They have supported, especially the SmackDown brand, since going back to the days of Eddie Guerrero. It's been years. Like, this is not this is not a new phenomenon. And I don't, and I don't get mad when WWE wants to do things for specific markets because I understand business. I didn't trip out when uh, Jinder Mahal won the WWE title. I don't care. I don't care about the superstar spectacle. I either watch it or I don't watch it. It's the same thing with the Saudi Arabia stuff. A lot of people are like, oh, I can't believe they're doing things in Saudi Arabia. It's like there's kids over there. 
They've got fans over there. So many people speak English over there. Just because you don't like the government, that doesn't mean it has anything to do with the people who are fans of the show over there. You know, get over it. You know, you, you're not, this is a, WWE has been a global brand for most of my lifetime. You know, it's just now that we're starting to see a lot more of it, you know, because for years it was, it was condensed to the United States. Now they're, you know, actively trying to go out and be uh, behaving like a global brand. So I'm okay with this. I'm okay with WWE diversifying, branching out as long as the stuff is still good and it's not messing with anything that I actually like. Or if it, it might become something that I actually like, who knows? I like Santana, you know, and I don't know. <laughs> I guess I got, got me some Latino cred. I like Santana. Uh, anyway, um, uh, that's it. That's all I really wanted to say, man. This is a, I hope that I don't have to do too many more videos on Bad Bunny. Um, but I will continue to do them as long as people are continuing to lose their fucking minds over it. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, use the hashtag three count commentaries to support the channel. If you want to send money, please do via Cash App in the comment section below. Uh, thank you guys again, and I'll talk to you guys later.